Hello. Hello. Uh, so, we're at the Falkirk Wheel. Are we? How can you tell? Hang on. Because they've got a container on the car park. <laughs> right in the way of where we want to park, yeah. so we can get a good stunning photo. Yeah. <laughs> we're here with a couple other CV owners. Helen and Steve, I don't go over 60 mile an hour. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Yeah. And uh, yeah, we're just going to have... He said about 60. <laughs> about, yeah. Uh, we're just going to have some lunch, then we've got a boat trip booked. Uh, hopefully before it rains, it does look a bit grey. But we've been here before, about three years ago, when we had the motorhome, but yep. pre-YouTube. Yeah, we've just got to hope that Rick doesn't get yeah, seasick. seasick on the... He doesn't like boats. He don't do I, the boats. I, I don't do boats, but we should be okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll pick you up in a bit. Bye bye. Are you ready? You're going in the wheel? Not impressed. That's it, we're going in. We're on the side that serves drinks. Are you in trouble? Okay, everybody. Good afternoon. Welcome to the Falkirk Wheel. Welcome aboard Anthony. My name is Stephen, I'm one of the boat crew here. Just up the back, got our skipper Jim. Just like to turn around, give up a wee wave. Be much appreciated. Hi guys, how are you doing? So, I'll just tell you a little bit about the trip. Our intentions are to change places with the gondola up at the top. We will then sail across the aqueduct through the rough castle tunnel, turn and come back into the top gondola. When we do, I'll come back on point at a couple of the landmarks and I will try and answer your questions. Just beware, don't know the answers to your questions, we'll just make them up as a go, you won't know the difference. <laughs> a little bit about safety, see me and Jim were wearing light jackets, I tell you right now there are only two on board, me and Jim have got them, we don't share them, so if something does happen don't bother holding under your seats because you won't find anything there. If you do fall in, we're not coming in after you. Other than that, sit back, relax, and I hope you enjoy. There are two tourist boats in service at the Bulker Quill, each with slightly strange names. Archimedes and Antonine. Did you see which one you are on today when you got on? Those special names were chosen for a reason. They're both important parts of the wheel's identity. First, Archimedes. He was a scholar and mathematician in ancient Greece who discovered something that's very important for the operation of the wheel. Any floating object displaces its own weight of fluid. Okay, that might need a bit of explanation. Archimedes' principle says that when an object is placed in water, for example, the boat you are sitting in now, it displaces its exact own weight in water. The amount of water that moves out of the way to make room for us is equal in weight to the boat itself. That might sound quite simple, but it's actually really important for the smooth operation of the Falkirk wheel. Each gondola, that's the big tub of water we just travelled up in, holds 250 tonnes of water. When our boat sailed in, we pushed about 60 tonnes of water. That is the weight of the boat and its fuel and all the people in it, out meaning that the gondola then had 190 tons of water and 60 tons of boat in it. So the contents of the gondola still weigh 250 tons. The clever part is that the other gondola will also weigh exactly 250 tons as well. We are evenly balanced with them. And that means that it only takes a tiny bit of energy to get us moving around the central core of the wheel. We're balancing each other out. So while you might think it would take a lot of energy to lift 250 tonnes of steel, water, boat and even you up the 27 metres we just came, it actually took just a small push. About the same amount of energy as boiling eight electric kettles. That's enough for a cup of tea each for everyone on the boat. We haven't got time for a cuppa now, but you can get one down at the visitor centre afterwards while you watch the wheel going round again.
What do you reckon, Paul? Is it good? On the right side of the boat, as we enter the tunnel, you'll see a sign reading Rough Castle Tunnel. A castle? You can't see a castle near here. That's because we're about to travel underneath it. Well, almost. There's a Roman castle fort on the hill really quite close by. It was placed there around the year 143 AD as part of a network of military bases built by the Romans to defend the area. These forts were linked by a wall, running right the way across the width of Scotland. As we emerge out of the tunnel, you'll notice that we're in a much different landscape now. More intimate, and certainly not quite such grand views as on the other side. When we turned around and gone back through the tunnel, you'll appreciate the views from there, looking out over central Scotland from a scenic vantage point. Should have opened the window, shouldn't we? Got their windows open. Okay, as we're coming towards the end of our time on this level, I just have time to share some of the facts and figures of the Falkirk Wheel. It was opened in May 2002 by Her Majesty the Queen, although she never actually rode it like you have today. If you were thinking of getting one for yourself, do be aware that the price tag comes at a whopping £20 million. Pounds. So we're just under halfway down. Didn't know Queen Elizabeth II opened the wheel back in 2002. What happened was, is there was a set of lock gates directly in front of you, called the Jubilee Lock. She got on a wee boat there, she went across the basin to a concrete jetty which is on our left. She got off the boat, she pressed a 499 doorbell that we got from b &Q, thinking that she set the wheel in motion. She didn't. All that doorbell was done, we sent a wee signal to the wheel operator, we then push the button to turn the wheel. So when we get down to the bottom, we'll be sat there for a couple of minutes till the gates in front go down. Once they do, manoeuvre the boat out of the gondola, back to the same side we picked you up on. So on behalf of myself, Jim and Scottish Canals, thanks for coming, hope you enjoyed. Guys, in the meantime, I hope you enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Thank you. Okay. That's the boat we've just been on, and I think there's going to be a canal barge maybe going in. The lock gates coming up now. Don't look too closely, that might be the sun. Yeah, so uh, hopefully, you've just seen a little time lapse of a little barge going up there, and uh, I've done something footage wise of what's going along there. But yeah, this is a Falkirk wheel. As we say, we've been here before, but way back in the motorhome days. Uh, hopefully it's going to light up tonight and we can have another look down here. Um, 15 quid a night to stop on the car park. But you do get showers and toilets 24 hours of the day here. Which is nice. So it's the price of a campsite really. What did it just cost us on the boat? Uh, £27 for the two of us. So an expensive run, really 27 quid, but you got just under an hour there and back. It was all right. You're on holiday, ain't you? You know what I mean? So for your 15 quid a night, you get a key that lets you go into there. There's an Elson point in there. And then you've got your little toilet in there. And there is a shower as well, further down. Washer, washing machine and dryers and everything. Oh, you've got the key. Heather's got the key. You have to put. You have to pay a deposit for the key. 
and then you get your money back. Look at this lot. There you go. There you go. Shower room. We're just going to go and look in the shop. Steve's going to do some shoplifting. So there's a little cafe. Well, say little, it's quite big really. And uh, a little gift shop look. Well, there's it lit up. Hopefully it's uh, lit up like that later. Fingers crossed, eh? Find your name on there. See if you've got a Scottish heritage. Oh, mine's mine's Welsh. Mine is. Hmm. <laughs> Snigger. You can't really see a lot, to be honest. Probably looks better from down there. This is the uh, top of the viaduct, lit up at night. Look at that. Came on as I walked under it. Hee <laughs> hee. How's that? There's obviously a sensor somewhere. So just like the kelp is, the lights change colour. So there's one thing to note, um, the Elson point and everything is down there behind that white building and you've got quite a steep hill back up to the top car park where you actually um, camp for the night if you like. So just bear that in mind if you want to empty and stuff. I've carried it down. You could drive down and park somewhere else. You can't actually park down the bottom. Uh, it's just for dropping off and charging electric cars. So yeah, bear that in mind. You can see as I'm walking up, just on the uh, right hand side here, is where we're actually parked. Parking and facilities wise, this is better than the Kelpies, but it's twice the money. 15 quid and it's 750 at the kelpies now um, heather's just gone to hand the key in and uh, you get your money back for the key and stuff like that and you can't park down the bottom end so i've just pulled up in one of the intermediate car parks from the top just waiting for it to phone me and then i'll go back and pick her up just going to show you you get a ticket for your windscreen when you park overnight and on the back, it's got all the rules and stuff like that. Oh, the phone call. Hello. Hello. I'll be there in a sec. Tra -tra. You heard that live viewer. Can you see? Shall I just drive round, round the roundabout for a few times just for the laughs? That'll be funny, won't it? Yeah, you watch this, I'll do that. She'll love it. She loves funny things like that. <laughs> look at her smiling face, look. Hey, come on, down, get down, down. Get down, get what down. What was that all about? <laughs> <laughs> because while I was waiting for you to phone, I was just holding the ticket up showing people that you get a ticket for the overnight parking. And I said, you watch, she's gonna ring in a minute. And you did. So then I said, look, watch out for the red coat. And I'm gonna drive around the island a couple of times and she'll love it. See, the viewers, they, they love it. Oh, this is you, haven't said hello, you haven't said hello. Oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, pick you up in a bit, goodbye. Um, and heading east. We've just said to to Steve and Helen, who like we say, the bloody dog fell in the canal last night, walked oh. straight in. Pitch black. Pitch black, panic. Black Labrador. So they've been... Uh, Take the next ride. They've had a restless night, as you can imagine. They weren't coming with us now anyway, but we may meet them up later in the week. We're going to stick with our plan and go to St Andrews because it's booked. Yards. Turn right onto Lime Road. It's booked and it's paid for and it's raining everywhere in Scotland anyway, so <laughs> we might as well go for it. Um, 
it's sort of suggesting this afternoon at St Andrews. Yeah. It's and then we'll um, we'll maybe adapt our plans from there when we get there. We were going to do a bit more Scotland and whatever, but the weekend looks better in Yorkshire, so we maybe we don't know. Yeah. Anyway, we'll, we'll see. We'll, we'll see. see. We'll finish this one here, and uh, you, we'll, you'll probably know more than us. <laughs> we'll pick you up on the next one, which we're going to start filming virtually immediately after this. <laughs> Hence, we haven't changed our clothes. Catch you later. Bye, everybody.